rising tide lifts all boats. That's definitely one of my favorite sayings. I'm going to say it over and over again. I have a very special treat today. I'm very excited. I only had to get this guy to fly out from Arkansas all the way out here to San Diego. Uh, one of my true best friends. He's uh, uh, getting me my best man at the wedding upcoming. Uh, Andy Farmer, thank you for being here. That's my pleasure. So Andy and I met at the Crucible uh, through our Man of War Society. Uh, I want to say about a year, a little over a year ago, and uh, didn't really talk much at the Crucible. And then right afterwards, we were we kind of hung out at the graduation and say, hey, you know, I like you. You know, what, what are you all about? And we started talking business and started talking about this and realized that we were actually polar opposites on how we attack something, uh, which was actually great. It was something that was fun. And when we fed off of that, and we'll definitely dive into that a little bit deeper here. But uh, right at the beginning, I got to ask, um, first off. I, I, we played celebrity. So we just got back from Napa. Uh, we spent four days in Napa and then just got home yesterday. And uh, it was a celebrity from everybody asking you to thank you for your service. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, that was a, some San Diego home love right there. Yeah, who knows from California, you'd get that at yeah. least four. Yep. So you were a Marine or straight out at 18? Yep. Straight out of high school, went okay. to the Marine Corps. All right. So you went in the Marine Corps and then you did your, was it four and out? Four years. Okay. Four years and out. <clears throat> four years and out. And then uh, right after that, did you have any odd jobs or you go right into your profession? No, I spent a few months uh, at my home and I live in my mom's basement and I helped them build a pool. And that was nice because I got to spend some time with them. And as soon as I think I got out of the Marine Corps two months later, I had the job at Edward Jones. Gotcha. So out of all the things you chose finance, now I, I will honestly admit this. I have an accounting degree. I love business. I barely passed my finance classes. I struggled, struggled, barely got C's. Finance and compounding interest was not my strong suit. And then I meet Andy and he goes, what do you do? He goes, yeah, I do finance. And I, my, I, a couple of my hair still in the back of my neck. I was like, oh God, I hated that part. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, you do, and you did finance. So I got to ask, why, why finance? Well, I mean, I think uh, the Marine Corps is a lot more helpful. Um, to get you into finance. Um, Cause what are you really doing? I'm just in the people business. I'm talking to people and I have to get up every morning to run a business and all those intangibles I got from the Marine Corps, you know, self-starting, get the work done, grind, grind, grind. Um, and I had uh, it was actually a funny story. I was dating a girl in Hawaii. That's where I was stationed. And she had said that you should come meet my friend's boss. And I did. His name was Albert Bende Yunes. And, uh, he said, yeah, you should definitely do this. You should stay in Hawaii, but Hawaii is an island. You can only stay there so long. Um, so, yep, as soon as I got back, got that job two months later. God. That was 22 years ago. Now, was, now I, I know a lot of your past. You and me have hung out quite a bit. Shoot, we talk almost every day. Mm -hmm. um, and your mom had some just amazing words of wisdom for you when you when you got this job. Can you share that with the class here? Yeah, so that's, uh, God rest her soul, the... Uh, she was always very supportive in the way that she would say, well, if you don't make it, you have a place to stay with me. Or you're not going to make it in the Marine Corps because you don't like to listen to anybody. Well, it wasn't true. I just didn't like to listen to her. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah. And then I've, I have learned about myself that one of the best things someone can do to get me to do something that seems almost impossible is just tell me and make me believe that you don't think I can do it. Yeah, you work off that negative energy. <laughs> yeah, it'll get done. <clears throat> uh, Dr. Uh, Warder and I in another podcast were talking about that. And sometimes some people love the negative energy. I realize as I'm getting older, I crave it more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You tell me so I can't do something. Oh, I'm, I can't wait to prove you wrong. Right. Absolutely. But it can't be you. There's no. got to be somebody that, that I, you know, care what they think. Mm -hmm. And then I have to believe that they're not just telling me to get me to go do it. Yeah. No, I, I could never pull that trick on you because we'd right. laugh at each other and go, go screw yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> So Edward Jones, you've been there uh, a long time and and you and I were talking about something in the car and this is kind of where I want to drive this mm -hmm. podcast is, is you're reading a book right now. What's the, what's the name of that book? Uh, 10 times is easier than two times. Okay. And give us, give us the, the cliff notes version of so far when you got the book and you're not done with the book. You're halfway no, through it. Still reading. I've, I've already implemented some things from right. the book, but uh, 10 times is easier than two times essentially is saying that um, you got to focus on the 20% of your business that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, that is profitable, which is usually one and the same. Um, and you either have to delegate or get rid of the other 80%. Right. And, and that's what I've, um, to be honest, 22 years, this, this book is a great book because I'm going to bring in my son to my business and he's going to do my 80%. Um, I'm going to only focus on that top 20%. 
And so essentially what I do, I just got 80% of my time back immediately. Um, so that's the basic gist of the book. And your, and your son's in finance. He's, uh, he's got a degree in finance. Okay. He's got a degree in coding. Mm -hmm. And all he said is, uh, that only taught me I hate coding. And then he got a two years degree in finance. And then um, I didn't really think he was interested. I said, would you want to work for me and eventually with me? And he's like, absolutely. I'll move today. So that's awesome. That's going to be, that's going to be huge. That's not only is that awesome on simple levels on many levels, but you get to work with family, you get to work with your son, give them a hand on a leg up. And mm -hmm. frankly, in our environment, getting a leg up, that's very difficult these days. I mean, good luck trying to buy a house in San Diego if your parents aren't going to help you. Yeah. 100% is expensive out here. It's yeah. a little cheaper in our room. A little cheaper. Yeah, about right. one fourth the price. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, he gets to move from Florida, has a position, and he already, he, he has a love for it. I mean, he went to finance. He does. It's not like he uh, went to school to be a gamer and then all of a sudden magically you're like, you're doing finance. And he's like, right. dad. Right. You know? Right. No, he's already stoked. Yeah. Finance is good. It's, it's, it's much more of a people business, what we do, mm -hmm. than finances. I think that's going to be a struggle for him, you know, because he, he does love the numbers. You give him Excel spreadsheet, he just eats it up. Um. But most of the time you're talking to people, trying to figure out what's important to them yeah. and go from there. Now, we, we had to tell the story of you and I when we started talking about finance with me, because this is this is sad. And I got to bring this to light here because, you know, I'm not all knowing of everything here. So you and me asked, he said, Aaron, you asked the question, he said, how much money do you think you need to give me where I can write you a million dollar check every year? And you're pretty much going to live off the interest. Right. Just live off of it. And I said, like, 35, 40 million. Mm hmm. And you looked at me and you're like, are you stupid? I said, you are the stupidest <laughs> smart person I've ever met. <laughs> yeah, 20 million. Yeah. yeah, 18, 20 million. Yeah. So then you and me, we, he, we, got, on the, we got online, you know, yeah. we our, you know, Google Meet or whatever. And you were like, all right, let's map out 15 million 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. you, gave me, you gave me $15 million 30 years ago. Where would you be at right now? Yeah, plug those in. And we plugged it in and, and you know, the economy did really good in those 30 years all, all, overall. And I think when it was all said and done, I had gotten 800,000 for the first two years, over a million every other year. And my stockpile of money was not at 15 million. It was like a 28 million. Right. So left. that was, yeah, left. Mm -hmm. So we, we are not only living high, but having a great life. But mm -hmm. at the same time, my nest egg's growing more. Right. So when you pointed that out to me, it rearranged everything immediately for me because I was so dumb with numbers. Mm -hmm. I thought I had to work my butt off till I had, you know, $40 million. And I said, okay, now I can live comfortably. Right. You know, if I want to go buy a plane, I can go buy a plane. We're talking a little Cessna. I'm not talking a Learjet. I don't right. That crap. Right. But just, a, you know, a little Cessna plane to go putt around from time to time on. And, 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 I, and I didn't know that. And when you pointed that out to me, I instantly went, holy crap. Retirement is close way closer than I thought. I'm five years out where right. I could retire and be mm -hmm. done. And, and I would never retire. We all know this. It'd take me about a week and I'd lose my shit and I'd go start another company. Something, yeah. Yeah, but what we, were ta what we talk about is we get our time back. Mm -hmm. You'd build something more. If I don't want to do that today, I don't have to. Right. You get our time back. That's the secret to happiness. Being able to do what you want, yeah. when you want, as long as you want, with who you want. Yeah. Happiness will always boil down to those four things. Maybe you want to surround yourself by people. Maybe you just want one friend. Maybe you want to be by yourself. But what you want, when you want, as long as you want, with who you want. That right there is, is, is kind of an eye turner because I tell you what, when I was younger, I was a workaholic. I turn a day, I turn 16, 40 hours plus a week. Right. And I just, just workaholic and I just knew how to grind. I knew I could out grind anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, Will Smith said it best when he goes, if you get on the treadmill next to me, only two things are going to happen. I'm going to still be on the treadmill when you leave. Or I'm going to die in that treadmill. Right. That's the only two things. And I was I like that. I'm like, yep. I yep. Got that. Grind. Grind. But grinding is not really the, the, the smartest way to get there. That's like running really hard, but you're running in a circle. Right. It's not, it's not the best move. Yeah. Yeah. I've always been a grinder, but that's why I'm so excited about this book. And, you know, we joined the society. And I remember one of the things that they said was uh, um, if you're in, and I probably have to have this cleaned up, right? Um, but if you're the smartest, strongest, fastest, richest guy in the room, you're in the wrong room. Um, and that's what I noticed. But the other thing I noticed about a lot of guys like you who are moving to company to company to company is um, the, the knowledge on investing, like what I do, is very low. And I think I figured it out. I think I know why. Because you can't control investing because you give me a check, check and I'll take care of it. Yeah. Um, but most people like you, they need to understand it, figure it out, and then they can master it and go on. We can't master the market. 
You know what I mean? You can diversify and rebalance and things like that, but you can't, you can't master it and know what's going to happen next. That's called being clairvoyant and nobody's clairvoyant. That's the first lesson you always got to learn in investing. But I think that's, I think I was thinking about that last night, actually. This you, is why they don't like it because they can't control it. And in, in, we've had this conversation multiple times and I agreed with you. I agree. I, every single one of my businesses, I can control it. Mm -hmm. I can control how fast it goes to market. I can control how fast we move on. I can make sure that, hey, if we have growth pains or not have growth pains, let's hire somebody and train and then push that next marketing mm -hmm. push. Like I can control it. It's exactly right. You can touch it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Then you know, my OCD flag flies really high on this. You're like, yeah. I got to have my companies. Yep. And then with you, I just write you a check and and I, I twiddle my thumbs and I don't know what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, chill out here and go somewhere else. I'm like, eh, now what's today? <laughs> yeah. You start another company. I'll, yeah. I'll take care of this part. Yeah. It No, it's true. And it's funny because I, I love tax, you know, and that's mm -hmm. tax was the part in school that I love the most. And you and I have the best conversations about tax savings and tax incentives now. Right. right. And, a lot. Yeah. And it's okay. You know, anywhere from uh, the Augusta rule to, you know, your, your company needs to do retreat and you can go rent out someplace and mm -hmm. retreat, or you can rent out your own home back to you for right. your business for retreat. And that's a tax write-off. Mm -hmm. You guys can go take that to your tax attorney and talk to them and they'll explain to you how that works, you know, mm -hmm. but that's a tax savings right there. There's a plenty of different ways, you know, put your kids on the payroll. I mean, then Chase and Zoe are on the payroll are both under nine years old. And they're on right. my payroll for both my companies, mm -hmm. you know, and that's just, there's so many little looks, bowls and tax incentives. But what I really loved about it is, is when you and I said, how do you approach somebody and say, give me your money, I'm going to work it for you. Like me. Because if you come up to me and said, I'm going to give you your money, I'm going to be like, no, you, no, I'm not giving you shit. Mm -hmm. When you come up to me and say, hey, what's some of your tax incentives, incentives, and I'm going to go, whoa, you know about that? I want to talk to you. Yeah. Then once I like you. Yep. Yeah, the the biggest mistake I think uh, business owners and you're kind of an anomaly because most business owners that I've met they're really good at whatever it is they do. Um, that's all they know. Um, some of them as simple as not even structuring their companies right, whether it's a C corp and you're paying yourself in dividends or it's something like that. So I can start talking about that or even something like estate planning. Like if you died today, is everything and everybody going to be taken care of just the way you want them to? The answer 90% of the time is like, I need to do that. Um, so yeah, just going and saying, hey, write me a check and I'll take care of it. You got to build the trust first. You do. No, I, I really like that that thought process went there. And frankly, you know, one of the things that drove me up the wall about you when I first met you, now I absolutely love it about you is, so you ask so many goddamn questions. Right, right. And vice versa. <laughs> I was like, I was like, this guy knows 5% about jumping out of a plane, grabs a parachute, jumps. <laughs> like I need to know 95% of the class material and take the test. Then I'll jump out of the plane, but not you. No. Just gone <clears throat> with everything. You're like that. It's just easier. You know, I just want to take a second to tell you that this podcast was created for education and to affect your bottom line. The only thing I ask in return is you share it, you like us, you comment on it, uh, give us some feedback and tell us that we're doing a good job. That really helps make this podcast grow a little bit. So if you can uh, do your end, we'll keep bringing you more information and a lot more knowledge. <laughs> By the time I figure it out, Listen, a year or two doesn't open. Well, yeah. Well, yep. I learned how to knit on the way down too. Right. <laughs> Put that parachute back together. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's cool. And I've tried mm. to emulate that. And I think that's why... Mm. Um, we kind of clung together at the crucibles because mm -hmm. it was just weird because we're almost complete opposites. Yes. Like you'll like, for example, with the tax code, you're talking about the tax code and, and you'll say, you'll see a 60 second Instagram video and you'll take it to your tax attorney. Mm -hmm. And I'm Googling, mm -hmm. I'm Googling and learning and trying to figure out. And I'll ask six tax attorneys to see if they all agree um, before I want to implement something like that. Yeah. When I take it to him and say, what is that? Then he half ass explains it to me. I render, remember from my textbooks, the rest right. of it, I fill in all the voids and go, no, that doesn't work for me. Or, oh, that's right. fucking awesome. Why didn't I know this? Right. You know, I mean, there's a lot of people that, um, you know, the reading the Bible, I'm not going to go into religion here, but reading the Bible is an undertaking. That is a big book. Mm -hmm. And that's not written in modern day language. Right. You've read it. I did. You yeah. read the Bible. Yep. A couple of times. Yeah. Twice. Mm -hmm. You, you, Matt, you, tackled that beast twice. Yeah, that's my personality. So I read mm -hmm. the whole thing and then I went back and then, you know, you get the subtext and the original languages. So I did a year and a half study on that entire thing. So for me, I'm not going to lie. I want to read the tax code book. 
that big nasty book that scares the shit out of everybody. Yeah. I want to read it. Yeah. I buy them for tax people. I'll get you one. Yeah. No, I will sit down and read that thing and then I will find the new loopholes that are coming out based on the changes they made. Like I, I'll get I, you one. I love that. I can get them for 11 bucks. Perfect. But I have, that's that. <laughs> I'm world, never going to read it. Yeah. yeah. Nobody <laughs> wants to read that thing. That's uh, why uh, they make it so damn complicated. Right. But I, that right there, I mean, if I can find a way not to give it Uncle Sam and I can spend my own money on something else and an investment, mm-hmm. then we got something. But, all right, that was a hard left tangent there. Going back to that 10X, 2X thing. 10X, 2X. Because I do, I do want to, I want to talk about that. You, you described something to me in the 10X, and I'm hoping you can kind of ex- expound upon this. You can 2X anything, but when you go to 10X it, mm-hmm. it's, it's a new ball game. Can you, can you give that yeah. speech again? Yeah. So if, if I came to you and I said, Aaron, um, what are some ways you could increase the revenue of your company 20, 30%? Your answers would be what? You can think of a million things you could possibly do. Increase your revenue 20 to 30%. Mm-hmm. But if I said, what would you have to do to multiply the revenue of your company 10 times? Then you're going to be like, oh shit. Um, this is going to start to eliminate all the other avenues Mm -hmm. like and there might only be one one way to multiply your book of business or your business your revenue by 10 times Um, so what it does for you is it makes it very simple to say okay this is all the stuff i don't need to be focused on Mm -hmm. because this is the only thing that's going to get me to that 10 times goal so it makes it you know because i I think uh, i can't remember who said this but something is not perfect when there's nothing left to add but when there's nothing left to take away um, so it takes those things away for you because mm-hmm. if it's not this, then that's probably not what you should be doing. If you need all of this to keep going, you need to hire that out or let it go. You need to delegate that. That thought process kind of blew my mind when you explained that to me, because I agree. If you, if you try and go to the strat, the stratosphere, mm-hmm. you know, like that'd be Elon Musk, for example. Right. We're going to, we're going to learn how to fly a plane. He's like, let's go to Mars. <laughs> Well, wait, what? Right, right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, see, that would have eliminated all of the things we're doing now. Yes. So we're not doing all these other things. Mm -hmm. We're just going to Mars that doesn't have anything to do with Mars. So we're not going to do that. Yeah. The limit makes it very easy, really. It's very, very simple. It's just not easy because then you got to execute. Yeah. And execute and then be able to pivot and still let go of the control. Yes. Yep. Yeah. There's, there's going to be a therapist make a lot of money off my ass on that part. Yeah, I like I like control. I really do. I I know you, but I think you do a good job of that. We just toured your whole plant. There's like a hundred people in here. You know what I mean? That That's was good. All work you're not doing. No, they were kicking butt, and they're mm-hmm. all doing well, and they're yeah. all happy. Yep. Make sure I say hi to everybody and walk mm-hmm. around, and no, it's all good. Yeah. People. Yeah. But that 10x, it's funny we said that. I, you know, I'm sitting there, and I guess this is I'm gonna, I'm gonna take two tangents here. I'll try to remember both of them. But when you 10x and you realize it takes everything else away. It's so hard not to implement that in every part of my life. Right. So when I come home, what is my number one goal? You know, and then whatever the goal is, I'm like, okay, so I don't really need to, you know, park my car and then go check the mail and all that. The mail will be there tomorrow. I just want to see the kids. I want to go play with them. And then I want to, mm-hmm. you know, cook dinner. And after dinner, that's it, man. I'm, I'm shut down for the rest of the afternoon. And I'm, you know, calling it a night. Yep. Maybe read a book or whatnot. But I, it's so much easier to execute and see what the goal is. But if you don't 10 exit, what do I get home? I say hi to the kids. I walk in my room, change my clothes. Now I'm surfing on the web because for whatever reason, I picked up my phone. There's so much crap. Next thing you know, an hour and a half went by. Right. I went home for like four hours and you go to sleep. Yeah. So I just farmed an hour and a half for no freaking reason whatsoever. Right. And so when you think about that in the 10X terms, it's so much easier to to execute on what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm instantly in the kitchen with the kids, you know, with the woman and, and she's sitting there cooking. Bless her heart. And I'm, I'm the sous chef. I'm not the chef. I can't cook for shit, but she'll tell me to chop up whatever. And I'm just, you know, following orders, mm-hmm. but we're together. We're a family. Yeah. And I, and I always forget that when I don't 10 exit, I, just, right. I screw around the bathroom. Next thing I know, a half hour, 40 minutes will buy. And I'm like, well, that was a waste of freaking time and yeah. nothing to show for it. Yeah. I think it's going to be really good for me because the more I think about it, because we joined, um, like you said, the man of war society. Mm-hmm. And th- so you're just surrounded by all these men who might have already 10x but if if not they're just doing fantastic yeah um and it makes you want more and for me i was just i wanted the the more and i had that plan going i was focusing on that stuff like okay i'm going to get an estate attorney everywhere i'm going to get the state planning i'm going to get this done i'm going to do all these things but the problem was what kept pulling me back was that 80 percent i always had to focus on the 80 percent why because it's my livelihood and i just spent 22 years of my life building that business um and 
you know, my clients are friends. Those people are important to me. Also, nobody can do it better than I can, right? You know? Yeah. Um, but no, my son will do a fine job. But uh, the piece I was missing, I was putting all these pieces together to get here, but I still had to take 80% of my time and focus on the stuff that doesn't excite me. It's not as important that I should really give someone else the opportunity. They talk about in that book, um, you know, CEOs should think who, not what. Like, not what is the work you need to be doing, who should be doing this work. A good CEO isn't going to say, he's not going to say, uh, um, this needs to get done. He's going to say, who needs to do this? Because he wants it done, but he's not going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but he's going to find the right person for that job who loves that job. Who is going to do it versus what? Needs who, to get not done. what? Yeah. And that, and that is, in my mind, that's the difference between a CEO and a COO. The COO is going to be a grinder. He's the guy that's just going to keep grinding and going. As the company gets better, he might mm -hmm. help delegate and grow that, but he's figuring out how to get it done. Right. Not, this needs to get done and go find me something to pull it off. You know, right. that's, the, and I will say jumping from sales and sales manager from, and then VP. And then finally, when I took over the business, I'm, you know, I got the, the label of CEO. I was not a CEO for years. Right. You're I was a grinder. I was a grinder. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, and then the company just, was eh -eh. Mm -hmm. you know it didn't really grow it didn't really shrink it grew off of grinding but what two percent four percent nothing special about it whatsoever right and so yeah no that that who is kind of eye-opening as well as who is going to do this who can i get to do this and it doesn't have to be inside your four walls you can outsource it mm -hmm. you know it doesn't have to be an employee every single time you got to do that cost yeah. and benefit analysis as well yeah 100 percent. i just I, I get the picture of you just trying to drag you know 80% of all your stuff behind you while you're focused on this 20%. You're never going to be as good at it. You got to let it go. Yeah. Notice, would it be safe to say that if you do never let that 80% go, are you going to hit burnout faster? What I'm already there. And I, and it wasn't until this light bulb went off and I read this book. Um, but for about five years, I've just been grinding, grinding. What is, it's almost maybe it's just not as fun. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I know what I need to do. I know what my clients need. I know what my clients want. Um, but like I said, a lot of my clients are like family. Yeah. And then once you serve them for so for so long, you don't think anybody else can do a better job. Plus, you if you bring somebody else in, they're going to start getting upset, even though you're doing it for them. Um, they still get upset. You know, it was it was funny because um, I had a, I had a protege and she took over all my sales, and for a year. I, I, I was a helicopter mom. Oh my God. I would just hover over her all the time. Do this, do that, do this, do that. And drove her up a wall. And finally she didn't kick me out. And I, and I let her, I was like, fine, whatever. And I left. And all the sales went up because she had a different style. She had learned from my style and then incorporated a mm -hmm. different style. And just because I did, it doesn't mean it is the best way. Right. And we, and the relationship was already cemented. It was already bonded there. So the heavy lifting was done. How can they service them better? And I was still trying to build a relationship when I didn't need to just service the account, take care of it, yep. make sure it's done right. And so mm -hmm. it was kind of funny when I did let go and let the OCD go, it ended up being better anyway. Yeah. You know, so it was, it was a, it was a uh, breath of fresh air to say, oh, not only is it getting done, but everybody likes you, it's happy, I can move on. Yep. And these, this last year or so for me, it's probably been the most fun I've had with all three of the companies because I'm not mired in that 80%. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, it was funny. Last week, somebody asked me to do a presentation for Squirk Will. I didn't knock the dust off. I hadn't done a presentation over two years. So, I mean, I got my wheels back on real quickly, but for a second there, I was like, oh, hold on. Where's that button at? I know it's here, but I can't remember. Yeah. And the girls were laughing at me and I was like, I know, I'm out of practice. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Which is good. You, this is exactly where you should be. Mm -hmm. You know it's what fun. I mean? As you grow the company, you should, there's a lot of stuff in my office that I already have delegated. Mm -hmm. They're like, can you take this check? I'm like, I can, but I don't know what to do with it when I get it. Girls got to scan that in somehow. They use their wizardry, get it scanned in. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know how it happens. Oh, and that's, you know, that's when you think about it, when there's so much going on in each one of the companies, when somebody truly has it controlled, you know, like our, our programmer guy here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I own the sign company, but I don't know how to run that router. I don't know how to read the, you know, program that G code. Right. I could if I wanted to, but that would be a complete waste of time. Right. You know, and he handled it like a champ. The machines run beautifully. We haven't had, you know, farming piece of material in years. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's doing, but there's one of those things where we've delegated for so long that I got no idea how to do that. Right. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to. No. 
it's not my place. It's mm. not what I should be doing right now. Yeah. But that, yeah, that 10 X, when you think about that, you know, if, if I were to restart a company right now, well, actually, you know what, let's play this game. Let's go down this rabbit hole. <clears throat> this will also tie back in the beginning of this. Where I said you and me are polar opposites. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you witness something as people age and they get older they start to get crankier and they start to say that the world is, you know, bad and it's, it's just, it's ugly. And I don't know how you guys can live in this world. And, the, and they, and they just get this jaded yep. viewpoint of the world. Yep. And at the end of the day, you had a theory. Well, it's not a theory. It's a, it's a psychological, I can't remember what it's called. Okay. But as people, they, they taught you this in sales school, as people get older, uh, closer to them ending, um, they have a hard time internally uh, feeling like the world can go on without them. So something happens where they just make it worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. This has never been this bad. I don't know what the country's going to do, you know, but clearly you can go back in history and see things as bad, you know, presidents getting shot in the head, just yep. quitting on the tarmac. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, so it's not been, you know, this isn't the worst it's ever been. I mean, you go back even farther and if you weren't the right religion, they'd rip your kids in half, you know? Yeah. So it's not the worst it's ever been. But as you get older, you just, some, not all, um, they just get grumpy. They get grumpy with me and they start acting uh, different. Like, well, I don't think it's going to recover. Like, oh, you've been with me for 22 years. It's recovered every single time I've told you it's going to recover. Um, but just this time, because they're getting older. Why well, were your thoughts on that? No, no, no. What I, what I love about it is where we had a business idea that we did. And oh, I, yeah. Yeah. So I had, so you, you thought it up and I was like, this is genius. And then we both kind of went in different directions and we had named it. Um, Infinity. Infinity Life. Yep. You know, we said, mm -hmm. okay, and, th and this is how, this is a good example of you and I, you thought about this for a week or wherever, how long you did, you called me, you told me about it. And before I got off the phone, I had bought the domain. Right. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm starting to lay it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we talked about your infinity life, you know, mm -hmm. was the name of the company and where we can have somebody come in, fill it out, record a video of them that they can be this video can be presented at their funeral mm -hmm. this is a video that you can keep on and your significant loved ones can you know log on and watch the video whenever they want to you know we guys we saw a little tiny piece of that in um marvel's you know the end game robert downey jr's character in yep. iron man he yeah. had filmed himself at the very end and when mm -hmm. he was he had passed away they got to watch it one last time to say hello right and that was very sentimental and meaningful and i know if those were real people they would have kept that video and watched it a couple of times. yes so you and me went okay if someone gets to live forever in a video in this infinity life, this, this app where they can download, then they have something. And I instantly went, okay. And I go into nuts and bolts numbers, right? I was right. like, how many, what's a server going to take? What's mm -hmm. this going to take? What's our break even? Yep. How can we pull this off to where we get this beautiful thing, but at the same time, we don't go broke doing it. And what was your side of that coin? Uh, you had said, let's see, what did you, oh, that, uh, so who would pay, pay for it after the, the people die? Yeah. And you said, well, the kids can pay for it, but we'll get their information. I was like, no, because now all you're doing is passing on a liability to the children. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to want to do that. Just raise the price for them. They're paying $15,000 for a funeral. You know, they'll pay a little bit more money so their kids don't have to pay. Yeah. So it's the people side, the people side. Yeah. Always the people side. No, you were just, where's the relationship? How are we going to help them? How are we going to mm -hmm. do that? And now I was there going, okay, how do I not go broke in the process? Yeah. Because the idea is there that sound. Right. But you and me went completely different directions. Which is perfect. Yeah. That's why we got to build the company. <laughs> we'll, we'll build it. <laughs> That's perfect. It ain't going to hurt me none. We'll build another company. Yeah. If it takes off, great. You have to buy another building. We we'll have to buy another building. But, uh, you know, the, I, what, I, what I loved about it is, is is I would definitely sign up for that. So, and honestly, I would sign up for it and probably do a video once a year for my kids. Because I have mm -hmm. no idea when the end's going to happen. Yep. You know, we could, the end could be today. You know, we mm -hmm. can walk out of here and it's game over. And so I just want to have something for the kids. The kids, you know, they can watch it and see what, you know, what happens there. Yeah. Um, I thought it was a great idea. You know, I, I still to this day cannot grasp how everybody can be on a Facebook account for free. That server's got to be massive and, you know, a sea of, you know, of servers and everybody doesn't pay for it. So obviously the advertisers do. Right. I don't feel like having a company where the advertising's overboard on it, but. Right. But yeah, no, I, the idea was sound. I really liked the idea. But yeah, you and me talked about it for like the last two weeks, just ideas and implementation and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we had some good ideas come up from that. Yeah. It wasn't just a funeral, but it was, you know, a loved one. Like you uh, get a text like five years from now. That was your idea. Mm -hmm. I like that. Get a text like five years from now to the, from your mom. 
yeah. a text from your mom, like on your birthday or something, yep. something that she pre-recorded and only unlocks at that time. Yeah. I think people would like that because that's the living forever idea. Mm -hmm. You know, how can I live forever? That's what everybody wants to do, especially since people are getting cremated more and more. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not even in the ground forever. You know, there's ashes. Yeah. There's no place to go and say mm -hmm. hi to them or see what's up or, right. or live at the moment there. So this would would bridge that gap between, you know, cemeteries mm -hmm. and, and the cremation, what we're doing, you know, just never thought about that. until just now, you know, yeah. there's, there's so many different avenues to go with this idea. Um, as you, me thought about on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I was meeting with the funeral director that day. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and I got that idea, but it is, that's what it, you know, for the entrepreneurs out there, people will go, how does an entrepreneur work? That's it. That's exactly how we work. You have an idea, you talk it over, kick the can around for a little bit. Uh, if it feels good enough, you spend $12. That costs less than a freaking beer at a restaurant. You got $12, you got a domain, yeah. sit on that for a while, do some market research. Like I think if you and me wanted to go further on this, we haven't really talked about this as far as go to a retirement home, buy everybody lunch and pitch them the idea. How many people like, how many people don't? You know, you get enough market research and you go, this is going to take off and do well. Mm -hmm. Then take it to market and away you go. Yeah. You know, but that's, I mean, literally that's all it is, is just an idea. And how many people is it going to go and how can we support it and take care of it? It's not that hard. Right. You just have to do it. You just got to execute. Mm -hmm. Execute. Most people are <clears throat> dreamers. Yeah. Not executors. No, they don't know how to execute. And that's kind of sad in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. It really isn't that hard. I know the unknown's scary, but mm -hmm. it's not that scary. Right. So. And they're not all going to be successful. Not everything you do is going to be successful, but you'll learn. No, and you don't got to bet the house on it. You don't got to bet the farm on it. You know, you yeah, just it's a $12 website. Yeah, that's all we got so far. Yeah. Yeah. We get real crazy. We can get an email address from Gmail. Was that $15 a month? Eight right. bucks a month? <laughs> right. You know, it's just one step at a time. You yeah. It's kind of good. I still owe you six bucks for my 50% of that. Call <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to go see Brian next. We get to learn uh -huh. to draw it up. Got it. <clears throat> but uh, no, it's, I dig it. I dig it. Well, I wanted you on this podcast for multiple reasons. I think I hit the nail on the head here. Um, just love the back and forth. I love how you and me think completely differently. We kick the can down the road. Mm -hmm. we, we listen to each other and go, that's a good idea. Well, I never thought of it that way. And that's, you know, if, if you truly are going to go into business and, and find a partner, it's got to be something like this. Or they're different they're enough. They look at the world differently. And it's not a negative. I guess that's the other thing I really wanted to kind of point out is in our relationship, there's no negativity. Right. You know, it's just, what about this? Do you think about that? And it's all positive. It's all upbeat. You know, even the tone is not, what you think about that? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a fuck you tone. You know, right. it's not, it's just a, well, here's a different point of view. What'd you think yeah. about it? Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I do, I do like that. And uh, I, I gotta, I gotta tip the old hat to Rafa for building this man of war society because we wouldn't have met otherwise. Never met. No, not at all. And a lot of those guys, I've, I mean, a lot of good, good friends that I, you know, call brothers and family now in, mm -hmm. that, in that society just because off of this. Yeah. Business opportunities. Lots of business opportunities. Yeah. We just we just had a, a buy-in from another guy starting a business, which I think is a really good business idea. And, and inside the society, he, he threw that out there. Um, who wants to buy in and whatnot? And I think a couple brothers did join in on his venture. Mm -hmm. That was pretty neat. Good luck to him on that one. I hope it's successful and kicks butt. Yeah. It was awesome. But thank you for being here. Thanks for being on the podcast and uh, stealing some of your uh, Monday morning away. But uh, this was fun. Yep, it was a pleasure. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You take care.